The Australian champion and fastest man all season. You'd think yesterday's victory against Patrick Johnson on the Gold Coast would be enough to cement Joshua Ross's spot for the 100 metres at Athens. But the selection process isn't that simple, with Athletics Australia able to choose on discretion, given Johnson ran our fastest time ever only last year. Well, I'm on a rapid improvement curve. I'm improving every time I get on the blocks. So um, I think they should take me. I've earned it. I've done everything they've asked me. He'll find out this week. While Hunter wheelchair athletes Eliza Stankovic and Kurt Fernley already know they're both going to Greece. They'll contest demonstration events after a successful meet in Atlanta. To basketball and the Newcastle Hunters won in extra time against the Central Coast Power in ABA's Waratah League. Playing at home, the Hunters started well enough. But spurred on by a travelling band of supporters, the Coast powered on to lead at half and three-quarter time. Locked 86 all at the end of regular time though, Newcastle went on to win 98-91 to remain in second spot on the ladder. In Premier League hockey, the entrants squandered a host of scoring opportunities early against West. Before Brad Smith finally got them on the board. A second to Ryan Quinn had them in the box seat before those missed chances came home to haunt them. West storming back to win by one. Good wins also for Norths, Maitland and the Tigers. Do you think you're a better player than the boys? Mm, no. <laughs> Alongside the likes of Anthony Warlow, Marina Pryor and Philip Quast, a 13-year-old Samantha Fitters shared the stage in the 1995 production of The Secret Garden. Now the Newcastle girl is filling the role of assistant director. Yes, it does bring back a lot of memories, but I also had ideas when I was doing the show before about certain parts of it. She's worked on those ideas with her father, Ross, who is producer and musical director. It's the 35th show he's been involved with and centres around a young orphan, Mary, sent to live with a dysfunctional family in England. Our Mary comes into this household and she's rather an uh, indomitable spirit, if you like, and uh, through her finding a garden, were making this garden grow with the help of a couple of the locals. Um, uh, she actually brings the whole family back to some form of healing as well.
The local cast features Annabella Redman and Stuart David Brown. The show opens tonight at the University's Griffith Duncan Theatre. With a promise of more than $200 million to tackle the problems of mature age unemployment, Labor leader Mark Latham hit the campaign trail today to spread the word. First stop, Tomago Aluminium Smelter, the largest employer in the marginal seat. Employment has become the new policy battleground in the federal election. If Labor wins office, Mr Latham promises career centres for mature age workers and $2,000 learning bonuses for workers to retrain. A strategic pitch to boost Labor's standing with older voters. We've got a transition fund that will uh, help workers bounce back as quickly as possible into work. Uh, you've got a problem where if someone's laid off and they're not receiving any government assistance, the longer they're out of work at a mature age, the more likely they are to stay unemployed. And the Hunter was a good place to start, with hundreds of mature age workers losing jobs in engineering and mining firms in recent years. The future looks uncertain for 250 workers at the EDI Railway Workshop at Cardiff. And there's another 90 possible job losses from the ADI shipyard, many of them mature age workers. The opposition leader was also quizzed about his commitment to the upgrade of Energy Australia Stadium. The, the case is important. Um, it's a worry to us that uh, the stadium wasn't uh, good enough to have the uh, World Cup rugby matches and uh, vital tourism opportunities and dollars were uh, missed out in the Hunter. But so far he's given no detailed commitment. It's prime Newcastle real estate and one of the largest potential development sites in the city with an absolute beach frontage. For property developers, it's a gold mine. The Hunter Area Health Service, along with Newcastle Council, are now working together to choose the best option for the site and will prepare a master plan including height limits and an evaluation of the hospital's heritage value. It is probably our most important site it's a fabulous location right on Newcastle Beach. It's a very large site. It has a whole range of possibilities for the city. The Royal Newcastle is the second oldest hospital in Australia. Since 1817, a hospital has stood on this site. And with the transformation of the old North Wing into luxury apartments, there's a possibility the rest of the hospital may be refurbished and stand for many years to come. But there's also plans to demolish it altogether. The site's got a whole range of potential options. They could be things like uh, apartments, 
uh, perhaps service departments, hotel or convention centre, perhaps a commercial development and even some community facilities. Jane Goldsmith, NBN News. the Terry's on board, possibility of other players coming across, yes. Are these big names in Australian football or European football? Big names in England and also in Australia. At 20, this was a huge step up for Jared Botha. Last minute negotiations secured the bout against Moroccan Prince Hamid after an injury ruled out the visitor's original opponent, Ben Steele. But what should have been something of a lesson for the young local turned into a mismatch of some proportion. Normally fighting two divisions above the Prince, Botha's height and reach advantage weighed heavily in his favour. The gutsy Moroccan, though, fought on to complete the six-round bout, but he was never in the hunt, with both are scoring a unanimous points decision and confirming his potential as a future star. And it was the night of nights for the Hunter Surf Lifesaving Clubs with their branch awards in Newcastle. Merriweather's Patricia Stallard picking up the coveted Lifesaver of the Year award. Police and the Coastal Patrol responded this morning to reports of a tinier ground on rocks near Jimmy's Beach. But its major operations, like the search for survivors from the Excalibur capsized two years ago, that really stretch resources. If we have an emergency like the Excalibur incident, which you can probably remember, uh, we had about seven people up there, including the water police, and we were monitoring the movement of all the vessels out there searching. And even though that was under the control of Canberra, we still have to keep our eye on it because it's so close to home. And you can imagine what it would be like up there. We would have this big room then as a full communication and, um, and a centre where these people can operate in a fair bit of comfort and get their work done. Volunteers looked over plans today for extensions at the base, which will be partly funded by a $220,000 grant from the federal and state governments. These are the people who give 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for the protection of lives of others, and I think it's a worthwhile investment. It will have a fairly large uh, communication centre which will double as a training room eventually. Uh, down in that room will be all the communication gear or repeat of what's upstairs for an emergency situation. The new wing at the Nelson Head base should be finished next year. Paul Lobb, NBN News.
Almost 2,000 people hit the streets of Newcastle over the weekend to make a short film in 24 hours. Some of the entries in this year's festival were different, to say the least. There was the guinea pig lost down the loo, eventually retrieved by some resourceful 10-year-olds. But the big winner from almost 200 entries went to some silver chair fans from Sydney, headed by filmmaker Luke Hammonds. It's a very Newcastle film. It's actually all about Daniel Johns and him moving into another film, another band. And it's just, it's a great comedy piece. It's all about rock and roll and it's really good, called Keeping It Hard. The Tomago based builder of firefighting vehicles was among the final four considered to build 18 airport fire trucks for Air Services Australia. However, an Austrian company has been given the contract, prompting Newcastle Trades Hall Council to accuse the coalition of denying Australian workers and the economy the benefit of the work. Many of these kids fronted today's NIDA workshop with stars in their eyes, hoping to trace the footsteps of some of our greatest acting exports. With any luck, become the next Mel Gibson or Russell Crowe or Hugh Jackman and with any luck, crack it big in the um, entertainment business. Have you got a backup plan in place? No, not yet. They were brought back down to earth very quickly though, working actors Katrina Campbell and Tom Campbell not sugarcoating an already competitive industry. To get into NIDA, about 2,000 to 2,500 try out a year and there's 25 places, so yeah, it's pretty tough. While they contemplate to be or not to be an actor, in the meantime it's all about soaking up as much drama training as possible and just trying new things and be willing to fall on your face and, um, you know, make a fool of yourself because that's fun and that's when you learn stuff. Adam McKilrick, NBN News. You either love them or hate them, and for those who do love them, it seems there's no better time to buy. With our exceptionally low rainfall, oysters have, uh, have uh, been of exceptional quality and, uh, and taste, and the consumer's sort of realising that. It's hard to believe, but the drought has played its part in the oyster industry as well. A lack of fresh water runoff from decent rain makes for more salty waters, therefore better tasting oysters. And they're certainly good now to eat, they're beautiful. Better than uh, many years, for quite a number of years at this stage. While tasty, plump and plentiful the oysters may seem now, the lack of rain could have done more harm than good. Farmers maintain they need fresh water to ensure nutrients are washed into coastal waterways so the oysters have enough to eat through the warmer months and remain healthy for the Christmas period. And that's not shaping up good for what we call winter mortality, which is just something that affects the oyster. It doesn't affect the, our consumption otherwise, but it, will, uh, it can kill the oyster itself and we don't have a good product to sell. The Weather Bureau predicts good rain over the next fortnight, but it far from settles the problems oyster farmers face over the coming six months. Adam McKilrick, NBN News.
It's a little known sport played with five team members aside and with a heavier ball than soccer. Futsal was never a passion for 12 year old Samantha Fenwick from Walls End and 11 year old Rachel Wynn from Fullerton Cove, who only started playing to keep their soccer skills up. We started playing speed soccer in summer for something to do in the off season and then someone asked us if we wanted to play futsal so we gave it a try and then we went to state titles and nationals. Now an international tour of Greece beckons. They'll join a national team of 10. What makes this even more special for Sam and Rachel though, they're the youngest in the under 14 squad required to make the step up a few years to play. But the Hunter Valley is a long way from East Europe and both girls' parents are frantically fundraising to ensure they make the first step in realising their long-term dreams. Oh, I'd love to play in the Matildas and I'd love to keep on playing for Australia in soccer and futsal. Do you think that's possible? Yes, that is possible. They leave on the 22nd of November. Adam McIlrick, NBN News. Few Knights fans would forget the last Newcastle Broncos match. Kirk Gidley produced the highlight of his young NRL career to get his side over the line by one point. However, Gidley hopes field goal heroics won't be needed in this weekend's Brisbane rematch. Uh, hopefully it won't come down to that sort of thing. Hopefully uh, we've got the right points at the end of the game to, uh, to win it. Steve Simpson has been in a better mood at training this week. Sunday's match against the Broncos marks the second rower's return after 14 weeks on the sideline with a foot injury. And Craig Hall makes his comeback following a month off with a leg injury. The winger will be hoping to defuse the potent Broncos kicking and running game led by Darren Lockyer. Lockyer is always dangerous and they've got some fast outside men, so we're going to have to be 100% on our game. Meantime, Newcastle's recent record, winning just one match from its last six, has prompted Michael Hagan to reconsider his state of origin coaching commitments. Not content to blame the form slump on a string of injuries, Hagan says there's a chance he won't coach Queensland next year. Uh, and I haven't been here, which um, you know, I need to assess what impact that's had on the team and, um, and I'll do that once the season's finished and see how I feel and, and go from there. Todd Nardi, NBN News. We first introduced you to Bianca Aravina three years ago when she was covered from head to toe in her Burns Recovery pressure suit. Then 14, she was playing at her local park when a boy of the same age allegedly kicked an ice cream container full of burning petrol over her, causing burns to 65% of her body. I told him to put me to sleep because I was in so much pain and then I woke up three months later. Three years on, the 17-year-old and her mum are haunted by the latest case. I got really upset and mum, me and my mum and my brother were just watching it and we thought, um, like, we felt really sorry for her and everything like that because I, I know how it is to go through the same thing, what she did. To me it's horrendous, 
because I went through it with Bianca and, and I feel for the family. Bianca endured 13 skin grafts and constant discomfort after being burnt and the effects aren't just skin deep. Physically she's recovered slowly and mentally and psychologically she's still gone through a very hard time. The boy charged with hurting Bianca has never been convicted but for the Sydney family words of hope from a survivor. Well, just to keep strong and um, miracles do happen. Yes. Paul Lobb, NBN News. Four thousand four hundred and forty four people piled through the gates at the entertainment centre last night for one of the most anticipated clashes this season. And from the start it seemed money well spent, teams trading goals. The Jagers even pushing their noses in front. But Sydney swiftly silenced the home crowd and shut down the Jagers' charge through their accurate forward line. It's clear to see why the tall timber of Catherine Cox and Jane Altschwager are the best scorers in the league. An eight-point lead at quarter time simply grew, while Sydney's defence kept a lid on any Jagers' comeback. Squeezing out of a Hunter sandwich, the Swifts had doubled Hunter's scoring by half-time. Player changes led to a short-lived fight back. Lara Wellam sinking her 300th league goal but Cox's 44th goal for the match highlighted just what a night it was for the visitors. It's a chore at the best of times, but in wet weather, doing the washing can be downright hazardous. Clothes left to dry near electric heaters are a common cause of house fires. You only have to be uh, slack for about five or ten minutes, walk away and we've got a fire starting. To be safe, fire officers say you should keep washing at least three metres away from a heater. And if you use a clothes dryer, make sure it's properly maintained. Another major one is uh, dryers, where they leave the lint at the back, not cleaning, not servicing these um, dryers, and we do get a lot of fires from that. Other common household dangers include open fires and faulty electric blankets. Last year in New South Wales, there were more than 4,000 house fires, and 30% of them occurred during the winter months. The fire brigade says it's timely to check smoke alarms, the small devices offering your best defence in the event of a blaze. We lose a lot of people, of course, so they haven't got smoke detectors. Fire officers can help with advice on where to install alarms. Natasha Bayersdorf, NBN News.
The snow started falling across the weekend and hasn't stopped. Gentle flakes of white magic fell throughout the day and while some people were caught off guard having their vehicles snowed in, the natives seemed content with their fresh alpine landscape. Families also flocked to the area in droves. Wonderful, wonderful. The kids haven't seen it before. Yeah, it's good fun. Every year we make it a like an annual event when it snows. <laughs> Long-time park officers say more than 30 centimetres of snow has fallen so far. Yes, this has been one of the best falls we've had for probably, oh, I'd say, close to 10 years since we had a fall anything like this. The heaviest falls were at a campsite known as Pole Blue, where some hearty campers spent the night. We had planned to go camping, but um, this weather kind of set in and we thought, stop, it'll go anyway. Each year when the winter chills come sweeping through the Hunter Valley, the Barrington Tops gets all the headlines, and so it should, it's beautiful up here. But the Barringtons don't hold a monopoly on snow in this region. 29 years ago this week, it was snowing much closer to Newcastle. At Mount Sugarloaf to be exact, snow falls amazing sightseers in 1975 just west of Newcastle. Roads affected by snow in the Barringtons will be closed for several days, but there's still access by foot and by skis. Paul Lobb, NBN News. With almost 30% of youth in the Newcastle region unemployed, it's little wonder Labor chose the city to sell its latest policy. It's just not acceptable to have one in five young people unemployed right around Australia. It's called the Link Up program, part of Labor's Youth Guarantee, and it comes with a $700 million price tag. Among other things, that buys no TAFE fees for high school students, 15,000 new TAFE places and apprenticeships, and a project to give 10,000 early school leavers a wage subsidised job. At today's youth forum, the big ticket items were well received. The extra TAFE places with this scheme would be a very, it's a very good idea though because it's often hard to get into TAFE as it is. On the apprentice front, John Wilson employs six young people, all of which are currently subsidised by the government after they've had 12 months of training. Under Labor's proposed package though, John's company would receive a subsidy from day one for each new apprentice he hires, an attempt by Labor to increase skilled worker numbers in an already stretched building industry. Financially, if you're getting a, a kick in your pocket, that it's, it's, everything helps. Adam McIlrick, NBN News. Newcastle United has always been confident of earning a spot in the new league. So confident, they named former English mentor Terry Venables as their new coach. And today came the news its bid was the sole proposal for the Newcastle-based franchise. All that remains now is to satisfy Australian soccer criteria. We are really, really confident that uh, we will have no problems at all making uh, every one of those benchmarks. A 170-page tender document, several months in the making, should take care of that. Of the 11 other consortiums fighting for a spot in the eight-team competition, three are from Melbourne, Sydney has two, while a Central Coast bid doesn't bother Newcastle. Given that um, the way the New South Wales market is, I, I'd, I'd suggest that will be a pretty difficult task for them. The final eight will be known early September, with a scheduled kick-off for July next year. 
where it's almost certain Newcastle will play under a new name. The club has looked at a number of um, opportunities in terms of uh, how we might relaunch ourselves in the marketplace. Not wanting to be drawn on speculation, NBN learned late today that the Newcastle Jets tops their list of possible name changes, but the side would play in similar colours to that of the current team. Jim Callanan, NBN News. The former Christo Road private hospital at Waratah has been sold to a Sydney-based health and aged care firm for almost $4 million. DHA Group plans to overhaul the site and convert it to aged accommodation for up to 100 residents. The revamped Christo Road facility is expected to open its doors by next June. Dry, dusty and dirty, just how off-road racers love it. They don't chase prestige, but they do race for respect and fun. Rutherford racer Tony Guy has been building and racing these machines for longer than he cares to remember, but he loves every second of it. You get out here now, the, the next 10 minutes, half hour, you're just going to go absolutely crazy and, and you can't get booked out there. That's the most fun about it. <laughs> A light-hearted look may be, but it's serious stuff when racing through a choking bush track. The dust is frightening and the, and the trees are very, very close. Yeah, pretty scary. Competitors on course, comrades off it. Drivers often lending each other a hand simply to complete a race that's really a war of attrition. And Newcastle's John Towers was able to juggle both pace and durability with his twin turbo Honda-powered machine outlasting all for him to be crowned King of the Mountain this year. But few left today unsatisfied with the weekend. And it doesn't really matter if you win, lose or whatever. When you finish, the feeling you get is just unbelievable, especially in a car that you built yourself. Well, despite a touch of controversy in last week's round, the calibre of football and the close score lines were just amazing, which included two games decided by the Golden Point. There has also been some individual performances that have been, well, just quite outstanding. Lincoln Withers left the Tigers last year to join the Dragons, and while he usually plays halfback, in recent times he's been pushed into the hooking role and is doing an impressive job. He's also fast becoming one of the biggest hitters in the game, and at just 84 kgs, he takes pride in lining up a genuine big man and giving it to him with more than an effective tackling style. Now, even last week, while he came off second best, he still rattled the cage of Sharks and former Queensland front rower Chris Beattie. And uh, look, he usually the big men love running over the small man, but I tell you what, not this guy. He's one to watch out for. Cowboys front rower Paul Rohuhi is another player who deserves special mention. Now, I have no doubts that he'll represent New Zealand at the end of the year. But it's Matt Alford from the Storm who really is the informed player of the NRL at the moment. Again last week, led his team to victory against Parramatta, scoring a hat-trick of tries. He is in all-time career form and that's why this week I'm tipping the Storm to upset the Roosters at Olympic Park on Sunday. And on to round 21 and the big matches just keep on rolling on. 
Bulldogs take on the Panthers. And while the dogs are favourites, I'm tipping Penrith, who are coming off a bye to pull off an upset. In the rest of the games, I like the Broncos, Cowboys and the Eels Sunday. I like the Raiders, Storm and the Knights. Good luck for your tips. I'll catch you all next week. Lakes United Old Boys were welcomed back to Carlisle today for a match that would decide the club championship. The Seagulls weren't nearly as hospitable on field, with Chris Horsfall sending Justin Seddon through for first points. But a gift from the restart allowed Dean Amos to show what he can do as the ruse bounced back. You could tell plenty rested on this result, and neither side was taking a backward step in defence. Wyong found ways around that, but they did make it look more difficult than it should have been in scoring a second. But a two-try burst just before half-time gave Lakes an 18-10 half-time lead. The Ruse bounded out of the blocks after the break, with Matt Ross's try getting them back within reach. While Jason Cash and solo effort took the visitors into the lead, with a clever chip and chase paying off. Lakes, returning serve with some great work of their own, sent a Jason Allen on the end of things as the Seagulls levelled it up 22 apiece, leaving captain Ian Burke with an easy conversion to take the game by two. When it comes to solving a GP shortage, there's been plenty of talk about trying to address the situation at Cessnock, which has one of the worst problems in the state. A new practice to open its doors at Cessnock Hospital next month will take a new approach to treating patients, with doctors to lead a team of health professionals rather than being a veritable jack-of-all-trades. So the new way of working is a team working off the same clinical record so that everybody can see what everybody else is doing, able to call in the expertise of other team members when you, when you need it, and led by a general practitioner. And the model will be under scrutiny because of its aim to make health care more sustainable. Dentistry is another area to benefit from the faculty's partnership programs, with Bachelor of Dental Surgery students from Adelaide Uni now spending time in the Hunter and Central Coast. Professor Marley believes the link will have long-term benefits. Their students uh, will be able to do in time their last three years over here, and we hope very much that that means that they'll stay and bolster what is a, a, a very deficient workforce um, in the area here. Gary Blair, NBN News. Built in 1895, mainly from locally sawn timber, the school, which sits on one and a quarter acres, still stands tall. Only now the classroom is bare, the bag rack is empty and the playground is eerily silent. Vacant since 1974, the Department of Education is looking to offload the Martinsville Public School near Kurungbong to the highest bidder. There's been a lot of interest from the Sydney market and obviously people that are interested in the history and certainly the Martinsville area uh, have come up to have a look at it. Expected to fetch well over $350,000, the school features a dinky but operable kitchen, south-facing windows, some delightful artwork and outside little boys and girls rooms. We've had people looking at it for a studio or for a, uh, 
a little takeaway or some sort of food outlet. Could be a lovely little coffee lounge. The hammer falls on the 25th of August. Armed with toolboxes, tackle boxes, scissors and paper, these women are on a mission. Clearing boxes of photographs is their aim. Oh, I just love looking at the photos. I just keep pulling them out and looking at them over and over again and just like showing, showing the kids. Scrapbooking is a highly contagious art form that's sweeping the nation, with record numbers of people now taking it up. It's a bit like learning a trade, but instead of bricklaying, they're building memories, using techniques like shabby chic, collage and inking. A hobby as well as you've got so many memories, you can write, you can journal and um, just remember those moments more than just the photo shows. And I have friends all over Australia that I've made just through this craft. A finished product looks something like this and can include a combination of art and craft techniques and products like buttons, beads and even material. It's been seven years since Sasha Fenton was married and she's yet to start her wedding album but weekly classes have given her the inspiration to begin creating scrapbooks of memories for her children. That's a way they can express their creativity and lots of people want to pass albums on to children so they can pass them through the family. Colleen West, NBN News.
It may be made of the same material, but this cat is certainly no dinghy. To get the luxury vessel to this stage has taken around 90,000 man-hours and 56,000 tonnes of aluminium. This is Forjack's first crack at high-end catamaran construction, and it's not a bad debut. This is all complex uh, architecturally designed, and it is designed that when it's finished it'll appeal to those people who stay in the high-end luxury um, hotels of the world. To give you an idea of the kind of luxury we're talking, here a 10-seater spa, down the front a helicopter landing pad, while the deck below features a teppanyaki bar. The four decks will also feature a gym, library, movie theatre and accommodation for 10 crew and 10 passengers. The catamaran, which is owned by Newcastle businessman Jeff McCloy, will operate tours around northeastern Australia for the very rich and very famous. The view from this back deck will be of the Whit Sundays, a far cry from the workshed it sits in now. Four apprentices employed for the $15 million project now have skills that will allow them to work all over the world. But they may want to stay put, as Forjax is hoping the cat will kick-start its assault on the luxury watercraft niche market. Our target is one, of the, one vessel of this nature about once a year, and preferably uh, more. Jessica Phyllis, NBN News. With his ticket to Athens booked months ago, Matthew Helms done nothing but plan his attack, resulting in a training schedule of Olympic proportions. I've also been competing well this year, so uh, you know if all if all goes well, I should, um, well, fingers crossed, I'll pick up a, a medal or two. We'll see how we go. The 23-year-old completes the national diving team of eight and is tipped to feature on the podium with team partner Robert Newbury in the 10-metre platform. Robert, my Sico partner and I uh, picked up a gold medal at the World Championships last year. Uh, we also picked up a, a gold medal at, um, at the uh, Grand Prix Super Final earlier this year. Expected to pursue a medical career after the Olympics, these games could be Newbury's last, breaking what's been a successful partnership and setting up what could be one golden send-off. Adam McIlrick, NBN News. Sharing the overall lead at four under, heading into the final day, Mitchell Brown didn't take long to make his move, a birdie on the second, setting up what would be a record-breaking performance. Around for the Sydney siders, Scott McGuinness leapfrogged early leaders Tristan Lambert and Troy Cox, firing a final round 69 to finish at three under. Brankston's Mark Hale among the best-placed locals to end up at three over. To another course with a much different pace and the second round of the GT Winter Mountain Cross Series has seen junior rider Ezra Barthold from Cairns edge closer to an overall win. Very fast and at times furious, it's all about first past the post. How you get there is up to you. The final round will be held in October. The man was travelling the New England highway just north of Brankston at around a quarter past ten this morning when tragedy struck. And it appears as though an iron bar has fallen from a truck or some sort of vehicle travelling in either direction. Uh, the iron bars unfortunately struck the vehicle and fatally injured the driver. The victim's wife was by his side in the passenger seat. She escaped injury but was treated for shock by ambulance officers. Police are still searching for clues to what caused the accident, trying to determine where the iron bar came from. They hope other New England highway motorists may be able to shed some light. Someone that may have seen the accident occur or circumstances leading up to it. 
Any witnesses should contact Musselbrook Police or Crime Stoppers. The name of the 34-year-old victim from Scone is yet to be released. Just five days ago, eight Sydney councils pledged to ban James Hardy products. Now Newcastle, Cessnock and Gosford are expected to follow suit. In terms of council, we must boycott James Hardy. I think everyone is appalled at this disgraceful company. Copping a wave of criticism for its decision to move a compensation fund offshore, the industrial giant which makes building products has been accused of shortchanging asbestos victims. Meet your responsibilities and your liabilities and if you don't, workers, consumers and government will boycott your products until there's justice for the victims. Paul Krause contracted mesothelioma, a disease stemming from exposure to asbestos when helping to renovate a house in the late 1960s. I certainly ingested asbestos unknowingly and um, so it was, uh, took 30 years and more to, um, for the symptoms to show. With the renovation boom and the number of older homes which may contain hardy products, it's feared more asbestos cases could emerge. Newcastle Council will vote on the boycott tomorrow night. Whether that includes third party contractors who use James Hardy products is subject to legal advice. Adam McIlrick, NBN News.